Hello children, today let us start class 8 mathematics overview recapitulation of midterm 2020. This is nothing but we are again moving on to our question paper pattern from chapter 1 to chapter 5. All the concepts once again I would like to brush up here. First one here is question paper pattern. Already I have discussed in my earlier video but I once again I would like to repeat it. Here you have 60 marks question, 60 marks question paper where 20 marks are objective and section B and section C B consists of this 40 marks descriptive. This is 20 marks objective and 40 marks descriptive paper that means you need to solve it. So now in this out of 20 marks section A we have 4 bits. First one MCQ 5. True or false, 5 state whether the following are true or false. Third bit that is fill in the blanks for 5 marks and answer in a word for 5 marks. And you should try to answer this in 25 minutes. Then after completion of this, you have section B. This is for 16 marks, 2 more questions, 8 questions. Do as directed. Here you need to solve 2 into 8. 8 uh, 2 marks and 8 questions, which is of 16 marks. And section C, 6 bit, solve the following 12 marks here, 3 marks question into 4 question which carries 12 marks. And this you need to solve in 30 minutes and the section B you need to solve in 35 minutes. And at last the section D, 7th bit, solve the following, solve the following. You need to write from 4 marks question into 3 questions, this also carries 12 marks. And this you need to solve in 30 minutes. I would like to tell one more thing that is write the question number, bit number, and section number properly in your answer sheets. Put every page number on the head of the paper. That is, if this is your paper, on the topmost part of the paper here, put the number and then write your name, particular everything. Then you start your examination. Then write the examination bit wise. And you need to solve all the bits. There is no option for any choice question we don't have. Answering all the question is compulsory. Now let us move on to recapitulation of chapter 1 rational numbers. Already you have dis we have discussed the chapter 1 rational numbers in our earlier videos. And recapitulation also I would like to brush up once that is properties of rational numbers. Closure property, commutative property, associative property are the three properties which we, are dis we have discussed these three properties are tested for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Closure property for all, what all it supports that is closure is for addition, closure is for subtraction, closure is for multiplication and closure is for division. We, we will test here. And here also the commutative property A into B is equal to B into A. Here also we are going to test with the two rational numbers A plus B is equal to B plus A. And um, uh, sorry, subtraction, this is addition, this is multiplication, subtraction and division. Whether it holds good for all the basic, uh, basic operations of mass or not, we, we will check here. Here associative property also, we are using three rational numbers and we are testing whether this is associative for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Now, after this, we have rule of zero. Rule of zero is nothing but additive identity. If you add 0 to any number, that is to a rational number, what is its answer? Of course, rational number itself. Next, roll of 1. Roll of 1 is nothing but if you multiply 1 to any number, any rational number, what is its answer? The answer is the number itself. This is multiplicative identity. Next comes negative of a number. Ne negative of a number is nothing but additive inverse. A is equal to minus A. This is additive inverse. So, negative of a number is nothing but if a number is given, you should write its inverse. Now, reciprocal of a number. Reciprocal of a number is numerator is going to be in, uh, in the solution, it will be there in denominator. And if denominator, for example, 1 by A is given, reciprocal is A. If A is given, reciprocal is 1 by A. This is the reciprocal of a number and it is also called as multiplicative inverse. So, all the problems which we have solved in the exercise will be based on these concepts. Now let us move on to chapter 2nd, linear equation in one variable. 
Here children, this chapter already you have learned in your 7th standard where we have learned about algebraic expression. What is an algebraic expression? The variables and constants are together performing some actions. For example, x plus 4 is equal to 5. So here, x is a variable plus is the operator which is used to perform some action that is addition. 4 is the constant, the constant 5 is also constant. And this is equality sign. This is equality sign. And this part of the equation is called LHS that is left hand side. And this part of the equation is called RHS. And this is LHS. So this is nothing but equation. Algebraic expression in the sense the terms which has constants and variables. For example, 4x is an algebraic equation. 10x is an algebraic equation. Why? Because 4 is a constant and x is multiplied to 4 because 4 into x says about 1 constant and 1 variable. This is a constant and this is the variable. Now next comes solving an equation. So whenever an equation is given, you should try to solve. For example, x plus 4. x plus 4 is equal to 5. Here 4, x is equal to transform this to r as 5 minus 4. So x is equal to 1. This is the equation which we are going to solve. Solving an equation is nothing but we are going to find out an unknown variable which is written in the form of an alphabet. So with the help of constant. Last part of this is solving uh, equation from complex to simpler. That is complex uh, problems will be given. Those problems we should try to take out the LCM if that it is in the form of fraction. We should convert to simplest form and then try to convert it in the form of equation. Then find out the value of the variable which is denominable. So here we are finding out the value of unknown variable using constant. So this is nothing but linear equation in one variable. Linear equation refers to the degrees of these variables have an order of 1, not more than that. So here these are simpler examples of linear equation in one variable. Now let us move on to chapter 3 understanding quadrilaterals. Here we have learned about quadrilaterals. First here it comes about curves. Open curve and closed curve. If a curve is drawn in it is curved. If two end points are known then it is said to be an open curve. Closed curve is a curve where you don't have any end point or initial point. This is closed curve. Now let us move on to polygons. There are two kinds of polygons concave and convex. So, this is a, a concave polygon, this is a convex polygon where the diagonals have exterior part and diagonals, so those are convex and those, oh, sorry, concave and where the diagonals are in internal, those are called concave. So, here there are two types of polygons. Now, classification of polygons. Poly uh, polygons are classified depending on their size. And what is polygon actually? Polygon is made up of line segments. Polygon is made up of line segments. Now let us move on to types. Quadrilateral. Quadrilaterals here we have, uh, these are the quadrilaterals. First let me speak about polygons. If it is a three sided polygon, then we call it as a triangle. If it is a four sided, then you call it as a square or rectangle or a quadrilateral you can say here yeah. I would like to write quadrilateral if it is five sided pentagon if it is six sided hexagon if it is seven sided hectagon if it is eight sided octagon if it is nine sided nanagon and if it is 10 sided it is decagonal. So these are the classifications of polygon under which we have chosen quadrilateral which is a four sided figure. A quadrilateral is a four sided figure where we have four vertices and four angles and four sides. So this is a quadrilateral. Now let us move on to types of quadrilaterals. It is parallelogram, rhombus, Trapezium square rectangle. So now let us discuss the properties of this. Parallelogram is this is a parallelogram where four sides are there, opposite sides. 
sides are parallel and equal. AB is parallel to CD. AC is parallel to BD. All the four sides are given where opposite sides are equal and parallel. Opposite angles are equal. Opposite angles are equal. So, these are the uh, properties of parallel. Now, rhombus. Rhombus is all the four sides are equal and diagonal bisect each other perpendicularly. Diagonal bisect each other perpendicularly. And in rhombus, we, if, you, if you want to check if the rhombus has all the sides are equal, how? Because it holds some properties of parallel also, but here all the sides will be equal like a square, but the diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. Now, next one is kite. The kite adjacent sides are equal. Adjacent sides, two pair of adjacent sides are equal. The first pair is equal, second pair is also equal. This side is equal to this side. It is A, B, C, D. So here the adjacent a pair of adjacent sides are equal and diagonals bisect, not bisect, it actually diagonal intersect here where perpendicularly. Now trapezium. Trapezium is where the one pair of sides are parallel, but not all the pair, only one pair. In one more trapezium, you have isosceles trapezium where a pair of sides are parallel and the other pair are equal. Those are isosceles trapezium, but not all the trapeziums are isosceles. But always in the trapezium, a pair of uh, opposite sides will be parallel. Square. In a square, all the sides are equal. Diagonals bisect each other and uh, we have four vertices, four edges and in a square all the angles are of 90 degree. But in rhombus all the angles are not 90 degree. Here the angles will be of different measurement but here the angles are all of 90 degree. Now rectangle. Rectangle is also a quadrilateral with four sides. Opposite sides are equal and parallel. Perpendicular, sorry, the diagonals bisect each other. Only the bisect each other. And uh, length of the diagonal also will be same, opposite angles, uh, so all the angles will be 90 degree. So, these are the properties of rectangles. Now, with this understanding quadrilateral, depending on these properties, we are going to solve some of the problems. Now, let us move on to practical geometry. That is for the chapter. Here, you have constructing a polygon is important, that is nothing but a quadrilateral. That is nothing but a quadrilateral. We have chosen a quadrilateral here and in your syllabus quadrilateral is given for construction. It may, be, it may be a parallelogram, it may be a square, it may be a rhombus or it may be a rectangle, it may be a square. So here construction of polygon is given where we are going to construct a quadrilateral under some of the conditions. When four sides and a diagonal is given. When four sides, all the four sides of a quadrilateral and a diagonal is given like this. This is a rough sketch. All four sides and a diagonal is given, you can construct the polygon. When two diagonals and three sides are given, three sides will be given and two diagonals are given. So this side is known, this side is not known, but after construction you will come to know what is that side. Two adjacent sides and three angles. Two sides and three angles. Then this you will know simultaneously after drawing what is the quadrilateral. Three sides and two angles. Three sides and two angles are given also. The last side you will know after construction. So here you are going to construct the quadrilaterals by seeing the conditions which are given or by seeing the data. And you are going to construct a square if only a side is given. Only a side is given. To construct a square you need measurement of only one side. If it is 5 cm by using 5 cm you can draw all the four sides. If you need to construct a rectangle, two sides you should know. If this is 5, this is 3, if both are known, you can easily construct the so, rectangle. If a rhombus is given, a diagonal and a side is okay or else two diagonals are given also you can construct the rhombus or the kite. So here it depends on the data which is given by seeing that you can use those data and construct the quadrilateral. So here only construction is there with the help of ruler, compass, pencil, eraser and protractor you are going to construct these uh, 
uh, practical geometry problems and in your question paper also whatever questions are given read carefully the data given and use the geometrical tools and please construct those things which are asked for you uh, draw draw simply with your hand you should perform construction here or else marks will be deducted now let us move on to last chapter of our syllabus that is data handling data handling as in our earlier video have discussed uh, data is given to you which is an unprocessed information which we process it and make a proper information for example data is number of students in a school number of students in a school so here out of students we make a column to write the present is absent is total number of boys number of girls so these are all called as data now tabular representation the given data which is given in the form of sentence or statement we are going to convert in the form of a table in form of a table where we are number boys girls total here like this tabular form we are going to write that is nothing but tabular representation now frequency number of uh, sorry number of objects a table contains is nothing but a frequency now class unit if here class interval is given 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 so this is the class interval where 0 is the lower limit and 10 is the upper limit the minimum marks or the minimum score is called lower limit and the maximum marks or maximum number is called as upper limit and the difference between those two limit is called as class width this difference is called as class width difference of these two lower limit and upper limit so now let us move on to types of bar graph is represented using rectangular bars which has difference equal interval in between them either it may be horizontal or vertical either it may be horizontal or vertical double bar graph double bar graph is where the double bars are drawn to show the difference of class intervals so this is the representation the rectangular representation to show the data histogram histogram is the representation of data where there is no gap between the limits from 0 to for example you, you are counting a strength of 500 in a event where it, the number starts from 250 so from 0 to 250 a jack line is used here Then 260, 270, and this is time. 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour. So, here for this jagged line, this presentation is nothing but a histogram. There is no gap. So, this gap is filled by using the jagged line. Now, circle graph. So, the same kind of data when you show it with a circle graph or a pie chart. This is nothing but a circle graph where we represent the data using the circle here, which is made up of angles. Full circle is drawn which is of 360 degree. In this we subdivide the data into number of parts or we find out the central angle to convert this uh, parts given into angles. So fraction is given, we are converting into angles. Now last part of this is chance and probability. Here chance and probability is nothing but the possibility of the any, any for example if you throw a die, what are the possible outcomes? That is nothing but probability. Event. What is an event? The number of outcomes or the collection of outcomes is nothing but event. For example, when you throw a die, it may be 1, it may be 2, it may be 3, 4, 5, 6. So, the collection of these numbers or the series of event, uh, outcomes are called as events. Outcome. What is the outcome? The result when you perform some action is nothing but outcome. For example, when you toss a coin, the coin will fall down whether it may be a tail or it may be a head. So whatever the results come out after that experiment is nothing but outcome. So on this also we have so many problems solved in our exercise that we should once revise for practicing chances and probability. So this is an overview of 5 chapters of mathematics of class 8 for your online midterm examination 2021. So uh, I would like to wish you all the best for your exams. Read well, practice well, slowly read the questions while writing your question paper. Just go through the question paper once, 
then start writing solve the problems uh, thoroughly check your uh, sorry your question number bit number and then write the answers i hope all of you have prepared well for your exam thank you once again and all the best for your exams